Hello everyone, my name is Avanita and welcome back to another episode of Threads of Cold Steel. In this episode, we fight Comrade Scarlet and Comrade V, and we're able to save the railway gun from firing into the conference. So yeah, all the chaos has been stopped by the class 7. And now, after all of that happened, we are going back to the academy again and continue our school life. Half a month after the incident at Corellia Fortress, a sense of lingering unease still hung over the Empire. The government increased patrols by the Railway Military Police as part of their counter-terrorism measures, while the Noble Faction bolstered their provincial armies. There were even rumors that they'd hired several Jaeger Corps. At the center of everything was the Imperial Liberation Front. They had allied with a terrorist group from the Republic of Calvert to attack the Trade Conference in Crossbell and as we'd seen firsthand, had attacked Corellia Fortress in an attempt to fire the two railway guns stationed there. They'd made it abundantly clear that they were no mere insurgents. These were dangerous people we were dealing with. And following their attempts to target Chancellor Osborne and the Reformist faction, rumors started to spread of a possible connection between the Imperial Liberation Front and the Noble faction itself. Meanwhile, New information was filtering in from Crossbell that surprised us all. During the conference, one of the representatives of Crossbell's state government made the daring declaration that Crossbell would soon declare its independence, breaking free from its neighbors Calvert and Erebonia. To no one's surprise, both the imperial government and the noble faction dismissed it as nothing more than delusional raving. But one thing was clear, that declaration only served to increase the tension in Erebonia and across the continent. And yeah, from here on out, we are going blind. On a cool, clear autumn day, the Academy's prestigious board of directors gathered for their first meeting of the year. Let's go. And that concludes my biannual report. Good, good. It seems the Academy is running like a well-oiled machine. No administrative issues to speak of. Student performance is sitting comfortably above the national average on exams and on general aptitude tests, too. The second year students seem to be having a banner year as well. The student council president in particular has built up an outstanding array of extracurricular achievements. <laughs> Well, she attended last month's trade conference, and from what I hear, she put the professional secretaries to shame. That's the law for you. I only wish the conference could have ended on a more... positive note. I'll say, the share prices of my company have been on a real roller coaster ride ever since. Undoubtedly, what happened at the trade conference has wreaked havoc on the economy as a whole. But moving on. I couldn't help but notice in the recent exam reports that Class 1 and 2's academic performance seems to be slipping. Perhaps the preferential treatment given to the upper-class students is hindering their scholastic development? Ha! That's on you, Noble. Well, students belonging to the nobility are allowed to return home during August to learn more about their family's lands. It's a tradition here, but one I can't help but wonder if we've outgrown the need for in this modern age. If I may, Traditions accumulate and hold meaning only so long as they're preserved. Our nation's culture, its arts, its social classes, all are rich with tradition that makes Erebonia what it is. And I believe we have a duty to protect and uphold them. 
After all, does not this very institution champion the ideals of its founder, Emperor Dreykels? Indeed it does. Though I've always understood Dreykels' intent to be the founding of an academy for the people. Even 200 years ago, when education was seen as the province of the nobility, male commoners were permitted to enroll. Today, we have plenty of young women attending, and the commoners easily outnumber the nobles on campus. Perhaps it's time we started taking strides to realize Emperor Dreykel's true ideal. You seem to be laboring under a few misconceptions here. Commoners were permitted to attend, but only as retainers. Retainers served knights, who served lords, who served the emperor. That's the way the Erebonian society functioned. From that vantage, the structure of the academy in its earlier days certainly seems to have embodied that social order. And if that's so, what is there to suggest that it's not the social order itself that has become the aberration? Well, for one, if that were the case, it would be far easier for me to see my views put into practice. But I can hardly get a word in edgewise between you two. Well, I'd certainly enjoy a return to the way things were in Dreykel's time, at least in that particular respect. <laughs> our apologies, Your Highness. Well, our role here is to consider your views and work toward implementing them. <sighs> See what I mean? Would you be so kind as to help me out here, Principal? I'm here to moderate this board. It wouldn't do for me to express my position on the issues at hand. That said, I'm sure your passion for reform will triumph in the end. Your I suppose I should have known better than to look to my old teacher for sympathy. <laughs> it warms my heart to see such a fine teacher-student relationship. Now, if I may, I'd like to steer this discussion toward a rather timely topic. We've already touched on the issues regarding the Orbal Net and the Orbal Staves, but... I'd like to stress again that the adoption of new security measures for the Orbal Net should be a top priority. Well, I'm certainly inclined to agree. Though we'll have to rely on the Foundation directly, as things are looking a little shaky with the IBC. You can leave that to me. The other matter I'd like to review is the use of the Orbal Staves and the Arcus Units. Or more specifically, we need to talk about how Class 7 should operate from here on out. Hmm. Hmm. Setting aside the fact that my daughter is a member of Class 7, I think we need to reconsider how the class should be run, in light of what happened at Gorelia Fortress. While it certainly proved an excellent chance to see what the Arcus units are capable of, I have serious doubts about whether we should carry on with these field studies, given the current political climate. It would be difficult to do so, I admit. With the terrorists at large and the problems in Crossbell unresolved, these are uncertain times. At the very least, I believe it may be in the class's best interest to cancel this month's field study. We could always resume them once the terrorists have been arrested and the situation in Crossbell calms down. Hmm. Hmm. Arise, O youth, and become the foundation of the world. I'm sure you all recognize the words of Emperor Dreykels. They become something of a school motto here. It's my belief that Class 7's actions at Gorelia Fortress perfectly embody the spirit of that directive. They stood together to stop a tragedy in the making and, in a sense, protected the foundation of our world. No one ordered them to do it. They took action of their own free will because they knew in their hearts what was right. Some might call it recklessness. Some may think it rash. Some may even venture to call it hubris. However, as chairman of this academy, I'm incredibly proud of what the brave young men and women of Class 7 achieved. Your Highness. Huh. <clears throat> Troubled times may lay in store for Erebonia, and for the entire continent in the months and years to come. But I believe that makes something like Class 7's field studies all the more significant. The experiences they're having now will help them find the strength and the means to press on through adversity. I can't be the only one who feels this way, can I? They do seem to be showing remarkable growth. That much is true. Although I have no idea how much my daughter is really capable of. Immature as she is. Yeah. Oh, it's just the same. She's so childless. You know, I really hate Alisa to this day. Even, even after what happened, I still hate her. <laughs> 
I could say the same of my hothead of a son. I do wonder about my brother sometimes. However, it does seem that enrolling at this academy has helped him start breaking out of his shell. Oh yeah, Jesus has a lot of big development. With the Academy Festival coming next month, we hadn't even planned a field study. So the issue at hand is just whether to hold a field study at the end of this month or not. I'd like to ask those in favor of going ahead with this month's field study to please raise their hands. And the result? <laughs> we never know. Alright, I'd like to begin by taking everyone's ideas for our class's part in the school festival. The festival will run for two days next month, the 23rd and the 24th. Equipment setup and the other preparatory work will begin in the afternoon two days before the start of the festival. But there's a lot of preparation needed before we get to that point and the sooner we get that underway, the better. That's all the more reason to figure out what exactly we want to do. Some of our options include displays, events, stage shows, and cafes. Does that sound right, Crow? Yeah, though no class I know would settle for just some simple display. I mean, come on, no one ever said, boy, we better rush to get in the line for that display. Well, either way, I'd like to start by soliciting some ideas from all of you. We're just brainstorming right now, so feel free to say whatever comes to mind. <laughs> well, I guess nobody is going to talk. <laughs> Would it kill you all to give just a teensy bit of cooperation? I know, I know. It's just... It's kind of hard to focus right now. After what happened? Well, yeah, but come on. That's not you guys' problem. Just focus on becoming a student here. And let the grown-up do their job. You're one to talk, standing up there with your nervous fidgeting. <sighs> well, I can't say I'm surprised. The board of directors is in session as we speak, deciding what'll happen to our class. And those of us with family members who sit on that board probably have even more cause for concern. <sighs> you can say that again. We can't even be sure whether there'll be a field study this month. That's about the long and short of it. With everything that happened during last month's field study, it honestly wouldn't surprise me if they just cancelled it. Hmm. I can't say I have any particular feelings of attachment to our field studies. But it does help you guys grow a lot. But I refuse to accept needless changes to our curriculum, especially with my brother involved in the decision-making process. Yeah, I can see what you mean. Makes sense to me. We also have to account for the fact that going on our field study means that much less time to prepare for the festival. So, as you can see, it presents a bit of a problem. Man, look at you guys taking this all seriously. Um... I probably should have asked a little earlier, but... What's this festival you guys keep talking about? Wait, seriously? Oh, I'm sorry. I should have gone over that for your benefit. Every year, the students here organize and put on a school-wide festival. There are stage events, food stalls, and all kinds of things to see and do. And it generally falls to each of the first-year classes to provide the main attractions. It only happened in Japanese culture, so that's why most of GRPG always have this kind of stuff. Yeah, participating is optional for the second years, since by this point they're usually focusing on their future careers. Oh, and each of the clubs generally get involved too. Huh! Sounds fun! In that case, we have to do something! We can't just let the other classes roll over us because we're small! <sighs> you say that, but I've already had one of the girls from Class 1 bluster up to me declaring that this time victory will be all ours! What? It must have been Ferris. <laughs> that sounds exactly like something she'd say. Well, Class 1 does seem to have had it in for us ever since the midterm results were announced. <sighs> If it's all the same, I'd rather not see the House of High Arms claim yet another nominal victory. Well, I guess it's time for a competition, boys. But we need to account for the fact that our class is markedly smaller than theirs is. Hmm, that's certainly true. 
Now, it'd help if we at least knew what the other classes are doing. It kind of seems like everyone's having trouble staying focused. Come on, everyone, get it together. Instructor Sarah? Uh, isn't this a self-study period? Oh, it was. But I thought you all might like to know that the Board of Directors meeting just adjourned a few minutes ago. So I decided to skip along down here and be the first to break the news. Then? What about our next field study? Are we still on? <laughs> the Chancellor's not the only one with a little too much iron in his blood. Because the board voted unanimously to have you continue your field study. Let's go. <gasps> you mean it? So that's how it is. You know, even though they're always hard work, I actually feel a little relieved. Considering all that happened last month, we'll need to be especially careful this time around. Still, it feels like our field studies are a big part of who we are as a class. Yeah. They're kind of a pain, but... oh well. We should be grateful to His Highness and the Directors. <laughs> That's good news! Seeing the hard road and the easy road, then picking the hard one anyway. That's youth for you. <laughs> it also sounded like His Highness and the Directors will be taking off in pretty short order. So I'll let you guys out of study hall early to go see them if you want. Oh. If you say so. I think I'll take you up on that. Water. Dad. Marcus, I wouldn't have the chance to talk with you since the summer festival. It sounds like you are quite the heroes at Gorilla Fortress. Come on, don't tease us. I'll be the first to admit that we acted rashly. But in the end, I have no regrets. I'm glad to hear it. It's good to see you again. Likewise, you may feel so far behind us now. You have a question, no? It's written all over your face. I do. You were in Legram, weren't you? To meet Duquesne. Correct. I was hoping to have time to greet you and your classmate too. But I imagine you would rather he not to take too close an interest in you. You imagine right. Still, I'm concerned. What is the house of Alberry playing at? And not just us. What are the four great houses and the rest of the noble faction trying to accomplish? Ha <laughs> ha, you asked like there's a simple answer. The four great houses aren't as united in opinion as you might think. Even with individual families, they can do disagreements. You know what I differ with father on several issues. But rather than worrying about others' position, I suggest giving some thought of to your own as a member of the family. I'm surprised you actually even managed to make it here. I was expecting a business negotiation to crop up just in the nick of time, like it always does. Time is something you make, not something you find. All the more so if you are in position of responsibility. Bah. <laughs> Lady Lisa is quite a multitasker herself. Y you should see her. She has no trouble balancing her time between her studies, training, club activities, and hobbies. Of course she doesn't. I'd be disappointed if she wasn't to manage at least that much. You need to start using your time more creatively, Alisa, instead of simply doing what's required for you. Ah. I saw the railway cans at Karelia, you know, and I saw what those accents are capable of. And I can understand why grandfather regrets me ever making them. Do you honestly feel things like that are necessary? Are you really okay with that? Huh. I think the fact that you've seen enough to ask me that now means that deep down, you have realized that they are but necessities of this era we live in. Well... The witnesses of others are only that, 
stop relying on them so much, observe for yourself and draw your own conclusion. That's what someone who was truly independent would do anyway. Still, I wasn't expecting to find myself indebted to you again so soon. Without your intervention, the Chancellor and I would have met our Maker in Crossbow. Uh, don't mention it. We just... We're just relieved you're all okay, Your Highness. Indeed. I'm glad you were able to focus on making a positive contribution at the conference. I wish I could tell you that's exactly what I did. I could scarcely find a place to chime in once the Chancellor and the Republic's President got going. Though the Mayor of Crossbell managed to dumbfound even them. I presume you're referring to his proposal for Crossbell's independence? Hard to believe it could actually happen. Well, as long as both Erebonia and Calvert refuse to accept it, the likelihood of it actually happening is incredibly low. Still, they're planning to hold a referendum on the issue to see if the population is in favor of it. So there'll be plenty more chances for disputes to break out over the issue. Well, neither of them want to lose all that sweet tax revenue from Crossbell. Half of it flows into the provinces too, so like, fat chance the noble faction's gonna take that lying down. <laughs> uh, Milium. Uh, as always, just spit out the tea. Oh, I swear, this kid has all the delicacy of a rock to the face. <laughs> so you're Milium, are you? Your name seems to have come up with increasing frequency lately. Well, I was hoping for a chance to see the famous Eric Getlam in action, though. Oh, sure thing. Come on, Lamp! Whoa there, cool your jets. I'm not sure this is the best place to call out Eric Getlam. Just a hunch. Lame. Objection overruled. Oh, that could have gotten messy. Honestly, it would save us all a lot of trouble if you could just refrain from saying whatever pops into your mind, too. Thank you, Mueller. Lame. Oh, who might you be? Say, are you from the Vander family? The one who serves as the prince's bodyguard? Yep, and he appeared at Trust in the Sky too. Oh, did Nightheart mention me? Mueller. I'm Mueller Vander of the 7th Armored Division. I was with the prince at the conference in Crossbell, so I'm in your debt as well. Glad to be able to thank you personally. The honor is ours, sir. It's an honor to meet a member of the esteemed Vander family. Ah. So you're the Radiant Blademaster's daughter. And you must be a practitioner of the Eight Leaves One Blade style. I'm always happy to meet fellow students of the sword. Oh, and you must be the young man from Nord who my uncle wrote a reference for. Yes, that would be me. I owe a lot to Lieutenant General Vander. It sounds like he's in your debt as well with everything that happened in Nord a few months ago. Well, you all seem like dependable young men and women. <laughs> Perhaps the prince's idea had some merit to it after all. <laughs> See? What did I tell you? And it's not just Class 7 either. The whole academy seems so full of life. Perhaps I should take this opportunity to break down social barriers by getting to know all of them in the academy's pool. If you really want to work up a sweat, I'd be glad to let you run back to Heimdall. <laughs> if you kept up a good sprint, I'll bet you could even make it in a couple hours. I'm so glad to still still have that kind of relationship. You'd actually make me do it too. Ah, uh, cruelty. My name is Mueller. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, the voice. I love it. It's like their hearts practically beat and sing. Of course, they are like made for each other, <laughs> to fill each other's spot. That's certainly one way to look at it. I wonder how long they've known each other. Probably since childhood. Well then, I bid you all a fond farewell. I hope we have the chance to meet again soon. Should be free time now, since it's Saturday.
Three days has passed since the board of directors handed down their decision. With the assurance of that our field study would continue, we finally turned our attention to next month's festival. However, losing those couple of days at the end of the month meant we had that much less time to prepare. And no matter how much we brainstormed, we couldn't think of any really compelling ideas or our small class could pull off. Just do maid cafe like, like the usual. Eventually. Jeez, I can't believe we burned through another week already. But hey, at least it's the perfect weather for a weekend out on the town. I hope you all enjoy your free day tomorrow. Especially since you've got another practical exam coming up next Wednesday. Ah, you can just sign off with to have a good weekend, could you? Haha, <laughs> it just won't be struck with Sarah if she didn't throw in a little dashman of torment. And then we have this month's food study coming up at the end of next week, right? Yep, just like a fifth planning. We might have made a few changes to the original itinerary, but nothing major. I will tell you all about where you are headed after the practical exam. So until then, keep on guessing. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to make it into some sort of dramatic revelation. She always does though. Oh, I can't wait to find out where we are gonna go this time. Oh, and by the way, you guys really need to figure out what you are going to do for the festival next month. First years have to participate, so if you can't think of anything, you'll be showing your first study reports instead. W what? Huh, that certainly won't be my first choice, or even my fifth. Anyway, just arrived from homeroom. You will do the honors, yes, class president? Y yes, instructor. Stan? Bow. Well, I'm sure she was just joking about putting our food study reports on display. I hope. Either way, we need to figure out what we are doing by the start of next week. That sounds wise. Especially considering we have our practical exam on Wednesday and our food study next weekend. If that's how things stand, we should make it our goal to at least have some solid ideas by the end of tomorrow. We also need to check out what the other classes are planning. If we end up doing something that was already being done, We'll seem totally redundant. Yep. Yeah, we should split up and start getting some info. But remember, we need to find something that'll work with the number of people we've got. Yeah, all the other classes have more than double of the manpower we do, easily. And they all seem to have some pretty grandiose aspiration at that. Hm, <laughs> if Christmas were relying on numbers, museums would be full of artwork produced by committee. There must be some course of action that can turn our lesser numbers to our advantage. Yeah, the question is, what? If we had an easy answer, we wouldn't be spending all this time worrying over it. <laughs> I'm getting kinda pumped up. Well, a little interclass competition never hurt anyone. In fact, it might spice things up a bit. Yay. Well, I guess we have some free time to do now. Daddy! Oh, decided to make a little visit to the academy today, did you? I'm kind of at loss as to what our class could do for the festival. You don't happen to have any good ideas, would you? Haha, <laughs> just kidding. We'll figure something out, probably. <laughs> Give it. There we go. Well, every time we met, I'll keep feeding you, Celine. I don't know what it does, but I'm sure it'll be worth it in the future. Hmm. It sounds like people are talking inside. Okay. Next on the agenda is the issue of the food and drink stall. More specifically, how we ensure hygiene standard across all of them. That's a big one, especially with how many non-academic visitors we'll have. Worse yet, Henrik and some of the other instructors were saying the stalls should be banned if we can't take care of them. Are they crazy? We wouldn't possibly ban food and drink stalls at the festival. That's half of the fun right there. In that case, we are finally going to need each and every student to understand their responsibilities in regards of the hygiene. 
We still got about a month, so if we take the initiative early, what if we discuss this with Instructor Petrix in the infirmary and work with her? That seems like a good way to do it. That sounds good to me. No objection here. <laughs> it's settled then. I'm sure if we work together, everything will be fine. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. She seems really busy. I was hoping to ask her about what Class 7 could do for the festival. But today definitely does not seem like the right time. Maybe tomorrow. Okay. Hey, Rin. Ha <laughs> ha. Speak of the devil. Crow was just talking about you. What's this I hear about you guys struggling with your plans for Academy Festival? It's embarrassing to say it, but it's true. Well, you have got so much on your plate with first studies. Who can blame you? You can start taking up stuff now that all that's out the way, though. Good boy. But it'd be nice if you actually lend us a hand or come up with something. And if I did, I'd be denying you, young star, a valuable lessons in independence. How could I live with myself? Ha <laughs> Sounds like Cross already met himself at home in K7. <laughs> he sure does. In fact, they are getting along so well that I think he should spend another year with them. Hold on, Gelika. You're not seriously hoping I get to help back a year, are you? What I ever do to you? <laughs> that reminds me, actually. What did you all do for the last year's festival? We were in different classes, so we all did different things. My class had a little extra thing that is some machine I built myself. Haha, <laughs> you suddenly shut off your stuff with that, didn't you? Meanwhile, I had the pleasure of playing the leading man in a play we held in our auditorium. Now that was popular. By which I mean all the girls went absolutely crazy for her and almost tore the auditorium down. Of course, I had to wait through the sea of admirers to get to my top priority. It was Gus Cat Cafe. Just remembering how impossibly cute she was in her cat outfit sent shiver down my spine. God damn it, we miss it! Wow, I didn't know you could weaponize cuteness. Of course! But not only did Crow take a charge by helping out a bunch of different places, he even organized our performance at the Class Auto Festival. You all did the performance together. Yeah, nothing too fancy. Might feel almost as popular as Galica Party, though, I don't know. No, let's not be humble now. It was far and away the most popular even at the festival. The audience was so excited that Toa managed to get over her initial nervousness and get really into it. Now I've got to know what this was. Huh, maybe I'll tell you about this some other time. Speaking of Toa, actually, we really can't thank you enough for what you did while the trade conference was going on. Haha, <laughs> I guess that applies to crowds too. I don't even want to imagine what would happen to her if you had stopped the railway guns. Huh, <laughs> okay, turn off the waterworks. Don't need to thank me for helping, buddy. It's right. Besides, it wasn't like we were the only ones involved either. I'm just glad we are all here safe and sound and, and can joke around about the festival like this. It's all the things I need. Even so, thanks, Rin. Good luck on coming out with something. Second net. Finish us to let your hand, just us. I'll do just that. Let's go. Progress the story. Yes. Insects, huh? Well, it is fall, I guess. Hard to believe I've already been here half a year. The festival used to seem so far off, and now it's just next month. <sighs> the past six months really have flown by. Huh? Is that you, Reed? Doa? Toa? Hey there. Haven't seen you out and about too much lately. I thought you were still stuck in today's student council meeting. <laughs> I'm surprised you heard about it. We just finished up a little while ago, so I thought that was a nice point to call it a day. I see. Did you guys discuss the Academy Festival? Yep. We've still got a lot we need to nail down before next month to keep the preparations running smoothly. There's enough to discuss that we're actually meeting again tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds like work's really keeping you busy then. By the way, 
Have you figured out what you'd like me to help you with tomorrow? I'll even take the tasks now if you have them handy. Oh, I usually sort those out before I go to bed. Hmm, I guess I could go over them now. But there's some shopping I really need to do. Sorry, is it okay if I give them to you tomorrow morning like usual? That's totally fine. Reen, there's something I want to tell you. And I'm sorry it's taken me so long to say it, but... I want you and everyone from Class 7 to know how grateful I am for what you did at Corellia Fortress. Oh. It's fine, really. We've gotten plenty of rounds of thanks for it already. We just kind of ended up in the wrong place at the right time, and we were lucky the instructors were there, and... That doesn't change the fact that you saved my life. I wasn't on the same floor where the conference was being held, but if a shot from the railway guns had hit Orcus Tower... I doubt I'd be standing here today. Toa, I'm just glad you're safe. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. She just says a chin on roll. Anyway, I feel like I'm just kind of babbling on and repeating myself now. Huh. She's awfully conscientious, isn't she? Oh, you said you were on your way out to do some shopping, right? Is there a lot on your list? Well, a pretty good amount, I suppose. Well, let's go together then. And I just remembered I need to pick up that stuff at the bookstore, too. Hmm. Then after I get everything I need at the general store, I might have to make a trip back here to drop it off. Alright. Rin, what are you waiting for? You could do that. Or... I could come along with you and help carry all those bags. So how about it? No strings. I just feel like you could use a hand. Oh, oh no. There's no way I could drag you along on all my errands. I mean, sure, it'd be a big help, but I just feel so bad asking you to do it. Ugh, that makes it sound like deep down I secretly want you to come, and that's not- <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it eases your conscience, there's actually something I need your advice on. It's about my class and what we can do for the upcoming festival. That's a lot of stuff. <sighs> that should be everything. Wow, is it this late already? I guess the sun has started setting a little earlier lately. Still, I had no idea you came here often. Well, Mick is always able to get stuff you can't buy anywhere else. He's my go-to guy when there's something I can't get at the Academy store. Like fireworks to use in school events. I think we even asked him for a penguin costume once and he actually got it. Yeah. It sounds like you have a pretty unique shopping list. Uh-huh. Wait! H how did you end up with all those bags? Hmm. I wonder. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Here, give me some of those. Don't worry about it. I'm f you're carrying plenty as it is. Yeah. You are too small to carry two bags. If that one is very heavy. we take a break in the rest area over there. I'll buy you a coffee or something. You wanted to ask me something about the Academy Festival too, right? Ooh, yeah. That does sound like a problem. Well, you're
your class doesn't have enough people to do anything that involves large-scale equipment or decorations. You all could get together and run a little cafe without any problems, if you all wanted to do something like that. But someone will probably take that idea earlier before us. I'd thought about it, yeah. Still, if we're going to do something, I at least want it to be as impressive as what the other classes are doing. <laughs> Feeling a little competitive, aren't we, Ring? Well, you have enough people to put on a play or run a game tournament. Hmm. Like a fight tournament? But other first year classes have already applied to do both of those. I see. I don't really want to copy an idea another class is already doing. Actually, didn't you, Crow, Angelica, and George use the stage for your exhibit last year? You... you heard about that? Yep. Um... how much do you know? Not... Not too much. All of them seemed to dance around the details. One thing they all agreed on, though, was that it was a real hit. Big mouth. You really want to know? Yes. Fill the detail, please. If you don't mind telling me anyway. Who knows? It might help me think of something Class 7 could do. Well, if you insist, I can't turn down a chance to help a sweet, fledgling first year, especially after how much you helped me. I'll reach down to my toes and muster every last bit of courage to tell you. Oh god, why is Toa so freaking adorable, man? Thanks. Was it some kind of traumatic experience? Well, in short, we put on a musical performance. A little concert of sorts, you could say. Wow, really? I wouldn't have expected that from you guys. So you can play an instrument then? <laughs> I am afraid not. That's how I got stuck being the singer. Angie, Crow, and George all played for the show, though. Wow, that actually sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. Hmm. If we put on a musical show, I'm sure Elliot would be a big help. So, what kind of music was it? Classical? Folk? Show tunes? Well, it's hard to describe, but it was... passionate? Really modern. Pop. I'm not sure I get what you mean. <laughs> well, it's not really a genre that's caught on in the Empire yet. Yeah, it's a pop. You definitely wouldn't hear it played in Heimdall's Opera House, that's for sure. Huh? Uh, Alright. Do you have some free time tomorrow evening? If you can't come until after you're done exploring the old schoolhouse, that's okay with me. Tomorrow evening? Yeah, I should be free. Should I meet you in the student council room? Oh no. Can you go to the computer room in the main school building? Sure thing. Does this have something to do with the concert you held last year? <laughs> You'll just have to find out tomorrow night. Anyway, sorry to keep asking favors of you, but would you mind coming to the lower class dormitory with me? If we stay out here much longer, we're going to miss dinner at the dorms. <laughs> you have a point. But really, I'm fine with all the bags. Just leave the heavy lifting to me. <sighs> You're so stubborn! <laughs> oh my god, why is she so freaking cute, man? God, the what? Chapter 6, Progressive Chaos Uh, hang out in the dormitory Well, everyone, I think this is it for this episode my name is Sonito and I will end it here. And yeah, the next day is going to be Friday. And after that, we are going to have some radical exam. Yeah, it should be how it goes normally. But yeah, that's all about it. I will end it here and I will see you guys later in the next video. Have a nice day and see ya. Goodbye.